Hello dear student, I am Dr. Vasan Boraste from KTHM College, Department of Commerce, Nashik. Today I am going to discuss with you about the topic that is accounting for liquidation in the subject corporate accounting for semester 4. In the last lecture we have already studied the meaning of accounting and uh, what are the priority of payment and how the liquidators prepare the final statement of account. Uh, where we have to study how the liquidator sold the asset and from the, that sale of assets how he paid all the liabilities. So let us start the, our example of accounting for liquidation that is liquidation of companies. Let us start the example. Here is the example of the bad luck limited went into voluntary liquidation as on 31st March 2020. The balance sheet as on that date is given over here. Balance sheet as on 31st March 2020. Uh, share capital is given 15,000 preference shares of rupees 10 each fully paid of rupees 150,000. 20,000 equity shares of rupees 10 each at rupees 7 paid up. That means here rupees 3 is pending with the equity shareholder and uh, rupees 7 per share we got rupees 140,000. Secure loan from bank. Uh, that is 38,000 that means we have taken a loan of 38,000 which is secured against the pledge of stock of raw material then preferential creators and unsecured creators so these are our liabilities on the contrary we have an assets of cash in hand 10,000 stock of raw material 50,000 finished goods other assets and profit and loss that is loss for a year that is 76,000 with this we have some adjustment stock of raw material was realized by rupee, uh, by the bank for rupees 30000 it simply means that uh, uh, which was a loan which we have taken from a bank for rupees 38000 against the stock of raw material bleach or uh, bank of whatever bank is there bank sold the uh, raw material in the market and they recover rupees 30000 that means still 8000 we have to pay to for secure loan after that, after that stock of finished goods is rupees 80,000 and other assets rupees 20,000. That means the valuation of stock of finished goods uh, that is 1,50,000 is, is our book value but it is sold in the market for rupees 80,000 and other assets realized rupees 20,000. The liquidator is entitled to a fixed remuneration of rupees 1,000 plus 3% on asset realized by him only. So here you can see uh, the liquidator is getting rupees 1,000 as a fixed remuneration for all this process that is liquidation process and 3% on assets realized by him only that means whatever asset realized by him on that assets we have to pay 3% to uh, Mr. Liquidator who is there uh, the expense of liquidation amounted rupees 11,000 expenses of liquidation is given 11,000 preference shares are preferential as regard uh, capital repayment that means preference shareholder we, you can see here 15,000 preference shareholder uh, they have a preferential right over equity shareholders as you know, at the time of liquidation, preference share, preference, uh, preference shareholders always have uh, preference rights over the uh, equity shares. Uh, yeah, show the liquidator's final statement of account. Keep it in mind, while uh, we are pre uh, preparing a liquidator's final statement of account, we have to consider the priority of payment that is I have mentioned over here. As per the example and as per the liabilities, the priority of payment may change. In this example, we have a priority of payment. First of all, we have to pay the legal charges. But in this example, as I earlier mentioned in the priority of payment, you can see here. First of all, we have to pay legal charges after that remuneration to liquidators, then cost of winding up, preferential creators, debenture holders and or other creators, then unsecured creators, preference shareholders. And finally, we can pay an amount uh, to equity shareholders. So in our example, we have a liability. We don't have a liability of uh, legal charges. We directly have a liability of remuneration to liquidator. So first of all, we will pay amounts to liquidator. That is liquidator remuneration, which is one thousand rupees fixed and three percent on asset realized. Here you can see liquidator realized only finished goods and other asset. That is eighty thousand plus twenty thousand. That means one lakh. On one lakh, we have to pay three percent. That is three thousand will be there. That means the liquidator's total remuneration will be 1000 fixed and 3000 fluctuating as per the assets realized. After that, we have to pay cost of liquidation, which is given over here. The liquidation cost is 11,000. Then we can pay preferential creators over here. You can see a preferential creators of rupees 1200. Uh, then unsecured creators and finally preference shareholders. Uh, 
we have we can pay if we have an amount at that time we can pay uh, we may pay to uh, equity shareholders but keep it in mind many times it happens that when there is a less amount or we can say a called up money is there at that time amount is lesser than uh, liability so we have to pay up to the preference shareholders so let us start the solution here you can see the liquidators final statement of account uh, as on 31st march 2020 where receipts and payments are there you have to draw the column receipts then estimated value rupees estimated value is nothing but your balance sheet value that means you estimated that amount but actual amount uh, realized may be different say here you can see a stock of finished goods value current value that is book value is rupees 1 lakh 50 thousand but the realization value is rupees only 8 thousand 80 thousand so here you have to write the estimated value then amount received then payment again estimated payment and amount or estimated or inner column is there and actual amount you have to pay okay now uh, you have to calculate the calculations of uh, receipt and then payment first of all you in your hand cash in hand is there that is in a first row you have to write down to cash in hand that is 10,000 and this is the estimated amount and actual amount will be same because cash in hand will not be changed then you have to write down amount realized on sale of assets so we have a finished goods and other assets book value is 1 lakh 50 thousand and other assets one lakh, book value is 1 lakh, 1 lakh 45 thousand where we received finished goods 80 thousand and other assets 20 thousand so we are going to write here 80,000 for finished goods and 20,000 for uh, other assets. In this way, we can uh, receive, uh, we can receive uh, an amount of rupees 1 lakh. That means liquidator realized rupees 1 lakh. So, liquidator is getting 3% on these assets because only there are two assets which is realized by the liquidator. So, we are going to pay fixed remuneration to liquidator that is 1,000 and 3% on asset realized that is 3,000. So, 3000 plus 1000 so total liquidator simulation will be 4000 here now uh, keep it in mind or you may write down that you have 1 lakh 10000 here you can see 1 lakh 10000 now you have to pay the amount up uh, from 1 lakh 10000 you paid 4000 still we have 1 lakh uh, 6000 that means we can pay an amount for this of the next uh, priority of payment you can see here the cost of liquidation the so cost of liquidation is given that is 11,000. So next payment is cost of liquidation amount rupees 11,000. After 11,000, you have to pay the next amount of preferential creditors. So in our uh, in our uh, example, preferential creditors is given rupees 1,200. So preferential creditors 1,200, uh, which is mentioned over here, preferential creditors 1,200. After that, the next number of uh, payment, that is next priority, is unsecured creditors. In our balance sheet, unsecured creditors is of rupees one lakh one thousand eight hundred. But keep it in mind that secure loan was rupees thirty eight thousand. Out of that thirty eight thousand, bank recovered rupees thirty thousand. That means still we have to pay rupees eight thousand to the bank. Here you can see the solution. Bank loan was rupees thirty thousand. Bank recover from sale of asset thirty thousand. It simply man, means that balance to be paid to bank that is rupees 8000. So 8000 will be an amount which has to be paid for the bank as an unsecured uh, liability or unsecured creditors. And our original unsecured creditors amount was 1,1800. One, <coughs> 1, so here we have to pay an amount of rupees 1,9800. Now we have to pay an amount. Uh, uh, preference shareholders the preference shareholders amount is of rupees uh, here you can see the preference shareholders amount is of rupees 1 lakh 50 thousand that means we have to pay an amount of rupees 1 lakh 50 thousand but we don't have an amount to pay uh, for preference shareholder that is 1 lakh 50 thousand still we have to only 16 thousand that means we have to call an amount minus 16 thousand that means here we don't have an amount for payment of creditors as well as preference shareholders that means we have to call from the equity shareholders here you can see there are 20,000 equity shareholders of rupees 10 each out of that out of that uh, we have already received rupees 7, uh, 7 per shares that means still we have we can call rupees 3 from the equity shareholders and equity shareholder has to pay an amount to the company so here uh, you can see here that uh, 20,000 equity shares of rupees 10 is that means 20,000 into 
3 equal to 60,000. So we are going to receive an amount of rupees 60,000 from uh, equity shareholders that we can call from the equity shareholders. Now we have an amount of rupees 170 and still uh, we have already pay an amount of rupees 126,000 and we have only 44,000. So balance 44,000 is given to the preference shareholders. The actual payment of preference shareholders was rupees 150,000. You can see here the actual payment was uh, payable to preference shareholders was rupees 150,000. But we don't have that much amount. We have only 150,000. So we have to pay uh, 44,000 instead of 150,000. That means each equity shareholders will uh, receive uh, 44,000 uh, divided by uh, 15,000. So here you can calculate. Uh, equal to 44,000 divided by uh, 15,000 shares. That means each shareholder will receive 2.93 paisa, 2 rupees and 93 paisa. So here you can uh, mention that uh, preference shareholders, uh, preference shareholders equal to 44,000 divided by 15,000 equal to 2.93 per share. So here. Uh, Each shareholder, each preference shareholder will get 2.93 paisa. Uh, so we have to pay only 44,000 because we have that much amount only. Now we don't have any kind of amount which has to be received from the uh, sale of any kind of assets or any other things. Uh, in this example, uh, you have to calculate such kind of solutions and uh, it is called it is called as liquidators final statement of account. So whatever amount we have to receive, we have to mention on the receipt side. And whatever amount we have to pay, it has to be mentioned on the payment side. First of all, you have to mention all the assets which you are, uh, which is in your hand, that is cash in hand or cash at bank. After that, whatever assets you have realized, you have to mention all the assets and assets realized over here. Uh, keep it in mind if there is any call from the equity or shareholders, at that time you can call uh, that call from the equity shareholders and that money you can utilize for the payment of any kind of liability or preference shareholders. In this example, there was a deficit of rupees uh, near about uh, 16,000 uh, for unsecured creators and uh, after that, um, whatever amount balance with, with us, we have to pay that amount to the uh, preference shareholders because preference shareholders have uh, a preferential right. So here you can see uh, preference shares are preferential as regards capital repayment. So when we are going to uh, repay the capital amount for preference shareholders and equity shareholders at that time we have to pay first of all preference shareholders after that if we, ha if we have an amount then we can pay an amount to the equity shareholders but here in this example you can see uh, the actual amount was receivable from the equity shareholders was rupees 3 so that's why we call that amount from the equity shareholders that is to call from equity shareholders and that was 20,000 equity shareholders uh, multiplied by 3 per share. So we got 60,000 an amount from equity shareholders and that amount has been utilized for the payment of preference shareholders as well as unsecured creators. So uh, in this way you can solve the example of uh, liquidation that means uh, the liquidation of companies uh, which is the, the third chapter of corporate accounting. Um, there was a working note given over here. You can see loan from bank, which was actually loan from bank was rupees thirty eight thousand. You can see a loan from bank was rupees thirty eight thousand. But out of that thirty eight thousand, bank already recovered thirty thousand. That means eight thousand consider as an unsecured creators, which is the working note given over here. The second working note is that, or you may write down that for making payment to preference shareholders and unsecured creators, the uncalled money or uh, rupees three equity shares uh, have been called. So. Uh, in this way, we can solve the final uh, liquidation of companies account or we can say accounting for liquidation of companies as per the Companies Act 2013 and 1956 in certain cases. So with this, I would like to say thank you. Thank you very much. In the next lecture, we will see an, another example of liquidation of companies. Thank you.